Sister Kate here. Wanted to talk to y'all about Hurricane Harvey. Now, there was lots of warning. There was lots of warning about Hurricane Harvey. There were news reports and there were predictions and there were models and there were uh, graphs and, and all sorts of stuff. So there was at least three days and probably longer, probably a week um, for people to think about what they were going to do and then do it. I was checking this morning some of the stats that have come out. Parts of Houston got four feet of water. I was also watching a video on an off-gridder and he talked about 27,000 gallons of water falls per one acre with one inch of rain. So just multiply that. It's hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of gallons of water that have fallen in that very concentrated area of Texas. Um, so th you use this opportunity to think about what you would do or what you could do or what you will do should something like this happen to you. And I'm talking from experience. We had flooding here earlier in the year, which washed our driveway away. Um, in that case, the sort of stuff we had already done to sort of handle the water was, was digging these um, waterways along our road and, and uh, our cul -de not cul -de -sac, our culvert got blocked by a, a tree um, root trunk. And so it, it caused water to flow in places we didn't want the water to flow. And once we solved that problem, the water flowed where we wanted and it, and it, and it stopped wearing away our driveway. But we're talking four feet here, people. I mean, even with our house up on the hump that it is, it's not, I don't think, I think four feet of water would definitely start, you know, eroding our um, foundation area. It would definitely um, swamp the garden. It would wash through these humanure compost things behind us, which could, could cause some kind of ecological issue in the water itself. I mean, it is composting, so I don't know how much that would translate to um, a problem in the water, because I don't know how, how broken down it is. But it would be a huge problem here for that. So if we were told we were going to get four feet of water here, there's a very good chance we wouldn't stay right here on this part of the property. We'd probably go to the higher ground where we know the water's going to wash downhill. But what about your area? What about if something like this was coming to your area? What would you do? And you need to think about more than one issue. The news coming out of Harvey now is that there are looters. What a surprise. With everyone having to flee their homes, there are hundreds of homes, thousands of homes, possibly hundreds of thousands of homes that are now empty. And if you're an, a, a person with a boat, canoe, kayak, um, lifted truck, uh, or some other, you know, fan boat, um, you now have the opportunity to just go from house to house and take whatever you want. Whatever they were forced to leave is now just sitting there. And the police in the area are saying that they're, you know, they're patrolling, so they're doing what they can, but I'm sure they're vastly outnumbered. <clears throat> so what would you do? Do you have a way to secure your belongings? Do you have some place you could take them? Could you take everything valuable that you own with you? Is your, you know, in this particular case, you would need a boat if you didn't get out beforehand. If you got out beforehand, then you have time to load all your valuables into some kind of vehicle. So could you do that? Are you ready to do that? Is it ready to go? Um, are your valuables packed in such a way that you can just grab them and go? Or are you going to have to leaf through filing cabinets and do safe combinations and all sorts of things? Um, that's one, looters. Two, there is a water hazard. The longer you stay there and the more stuff that gets swamped into the water, it does create chemical um, problems with things like um, oils. And when I say chemicals, you know, I'm talking about uh, things sitting around in hardware stores are now in the water. And toilets are overrunning and that's in the water. Um, 
you've got people with horses and cows and those fields are flooded and all that manure is in the water. It's, it's, it does become a problem. So even if you're going to stay in the area, how are you going to clean that water? You need to filter it and you also need to boil the heck out of it for at least five minutes and more like 20 minutes of hard boiling to kill all the germs that are going to be in that water. Um, you're going to have the destruction of your property. You're going to have, I mean, picture your house right now with four, five, six feet of water. People are having to go to their attics to escape. Imagine that in your home. What's that going to look like? These are things you have to think about. Do you have insurance? Do you have flood insurance? Because a lot of people have fire insurance on their house, but not everybody gets flood insurance. That's going to make a huge difference in your recovery. Um, how will you feed yourself? If you decide to stay, how will you feed yourself? If you have to go up to, say, your second level in your home, if you have one, do you have some way to cook something up there? Do you have some portable stove and fuel to do it with? Because if you decide to stay in your home and everything's flooded and nobody's around, you're not going to be able to go shop at the store. It flooded too. So do you have uh, stored food and is it in a place that's safe? And then will you have a way to cook it once um, the flooding has stopped and you're sitting there in your flooded home and there's nobody there? Do you have clean water? Do you have, a, we already talked about cleaning the water. Um, the electricity is going to be off. So if you depend on an air conditioner for your comfort every day, you're not going to have that. You're not going to be able to run a fan or anything else. Are you ready for that? Um, these are things you need to think about. These are things you need to plan for. You need to pay attention to what happens in your local area and what your major threats are. This is a perfect example. And then if you're someone who wants to help, let's say you want to go to Harvey and help these people, how are you prepared to do that? What help are you offering? We're seeing the Cajun Navy. Um, it's coming <coughs> to the Texas area and the people who are bringing their boats have a trailer to put their boat on and a truck to pull the boat with and they have life preservers and they have vests that are bright yellow. These are things you need to think about. If you're a medical person, um, someone with credentials, do you have a kit? Do you have a um, first aid emergency kit that you can take down there? And what sort of things would you put in it? What sort of things are you expecting people to have a problem with when you get there? Since they've been in a flood, what, what's going to be typical? Probably cuts, infections, um, possible contamination, illnesses. Um, think about that. If you're a firefighter and you're going to go down there and, and help local departments, do you have the gear to do that with? Or are they going to have to supply you with um, water safety gear? So these are just things. This is a big lesson, folks, and I hope you're paying attention and I hope you're thinking about your, how it may affect you, even if you're not in that area. All right. Bless you. Shalom.